council, I have no problem getting to the nitty gritty and talking and politicking and whatever. And so remember, I ain't blaming you, Mr. Griggs, but ever you have to, if you need a ride and you ain't got one, I'll take you home. No, you don't have to lead no meeting when we trying to take Council care of business because other people left. Okay. Oh, believe me, that's relevant me. because it's she not. said she wasn't here <laughs> and left. That but was Council her opinion statement. Council Madam has Chair, to do it has a lot right. to do with information and flow. Madam Chair, I don't want to appeal okay. you. You need to quit interrupting me when I'm making points. You want me to appeal? You want me to so thank you so much for coming and speaking, because at the end of the day, we will continue. I know I, I can speak for myself, I will continue to do the will of the city. I will continue to be civil, and I will not throw jabs, because there's, no, there's so much work to do in Flint, we don't have time to do that. Point of information. You threw a jab when you lied on me and say I called you MF and Bs on this public That's, microphone, didn't That you? is an improper point of information. Continue, Dr. Lewis. All right. Thank you so much, um, Councilwoman. But, uh, Madam Chair, excuse me. But I would also like to just briefly address that as well. Mr. May, you say there's a lot of things under your breath. And you made that comment that day I was walking in, and News 25 caught that. And you begin to go back and you begin to go back and forth. They caught the heated argument. See, a lot of things that said over there, we don't hear. Point of information. And a lot of things. What's your point? Through you, to the speaker, News 25 is here. I want to see if she say that I said M F and B. That's Mr. what Mays, you that's said. that's an improper point of information. Thank you. So as I conclude, a lot of things that said over there, people don't hear, and a lot of things that said over here, people don't hear. But we hear it. We hear it well. I hear you well. Thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Are there any other members of council who wish to address the public? How many minutes do I get when you give me the flow? You have five, but okay, you now, Miss Malik Dow, point of order. I can use three of them in the last minute to make a motion. Ain't right, no rule against it. Why are you interrupting me? I get five. I can make a motion in the second minute, the third minute, or the fourth minute. Why are you doing this? Point of you order. trying to make it seem like I don't know, Root? Point of order. But Councilman Mays, you specifically ended our dialogue by saying I have an add-on and passing your add-on on, making it the focus of our attention when we are on a specific motion. That is out of order, Councilman May. I appeal the ruling of the chair. That ain't out of order. There is an appeal of the decision of the chair. Is there, there is an appeal. There's an appeal now. Mm -hmm. Get with it, Miss Bells. Point of order, rule on it and give me back the flow. She don't know what's happening. So that is why, as the honorary park ranger of Flint, me, Yogi, and Boo Boo, believe that we should declare July as Parks and Rec Month in the city of Flint. Councilman Lewis, you have the floor. Thank you. So it was um, last council meeting, we went into, so last council meeting we had a discussion um, about an appointment. And the appointment we were talking about someone um, being called a boy. Well, it was very disheartening to hear right after we had the conversation about someone being referred to as a boy. And the council was adamantly against it. As soon as we had that conversation, one of my colleagues in the sixth ward, she got caught on the mic and it picked up her stand towards me, girl, bye. And that troubled me. It troubled me because we're having a big conversation around why we should not appoint a lady who called a black man a boy. And then as soon, and then while I was engaging, while I was having, uh, saying a statement about, let's make sure that we get put the whole conversation in context, just so we can see it and put it on record and move on and vote how we vote, it was picked up on the mic, her, making the statement towards me, girl, bye. It sounds like a double standard. We can't get upset 
and call it highly racialized when someone is called boy, and then we turn around and on the mic when we think that it is not picking things up and make the comment, girl, bye. That's not acceptable. And that's not the way we should operate on council. I'm definitely going to address this because um, Councilwoman Lewis didn't, if she talks about here in the whole dialogue, she should have understood that when I first described the difference was gal and boy. Now, as I have talked to you before, and we have used in terms, uh, when you've been at your home in Maryland, which you say you work part time here, we have said, girl, whatever, girl, whatever. So we, you and I have key keyed it up and had just talk. So it wasn't like that. So we're talking and calling a grown man a boy, the equivalent to a grown woman is if you call them a gal. But when we talk about you're being selective of what you're choosing, on May 23rd, you were dismissive to Chris Del Maroney. When he came to the podium and asked you, could you please pay attention to him while he was at the podium talking? And you did your hand like this. And you offended him. May 23rd, go back, look at it, it's on there. Being sued. Madam Chair. This that's time. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Del Maroney, your time is up. Okay, I, I appreciate that. And I would just say, uh, Councilwoman from the second ward, uh, when I'm here for three minutes, then I'll expect you to listen okay. to me for three minutes, okay? okay? The last time up, I was, don't wave bye to me. The last time I was up, you dropped something. This time you were on okay. the, your cell phone or Mr. laptop. Mr. Del Maroney, thank you. Thank you, yes. Next public speaker. When Councilman Murphy was calling me all sorts of names, you said nothing, nothing. And I had to remove him from the meeting. The last meeting when Councilwoman Herkin wrote her said she didn't like some of her colleagues, but she's good friends with you. You didn't say nothing about her decorum. You have said that Councilman Mays called you MFB. I asked you, did he say it? You said, well, they, everyone heard it. I asked, the news was here. The news stated like they didn't want to get into it. Councilwoman Priestley, you said she heard, I asked her. She said she didn't hear it. So that was a falsehood. So the public can see for all the talk of this is being done for the good of the Point public. Point of order, Ms. Fields, we are on a subpoena for Mr. Gleason and not our lawsuit. So I'm asking you to stay on task and that is your only warning. Thank you, Ms. Galloway. You're welcome. I will be filing for information about all these non-necessary lawsuits because to the public, what this equates to is dumpsters picked up, lights fixed, potholes fixed. It's, it's time to stop giving in to Mr. May's ego on these frivolous Ms. Fields, actions. that's your final warning. Pardon. Do one more personal attack and I am telling you that Sergeant Booth will escort you out of here. That is it. Does anyone else want to make any comment on this motion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call to approve. I got council people, and I'm going to wrap up, telling me don't do point of order, point of information, and when I talk, they do more of them than I do. Hypocritical. So God bless the city of Flint. Stay tuned and be careful who and what you listen to. And um, I'm going to be careful what I do and say, and now I am. But believe me, at 60, I'm almost out the door. We're going to be all dead in a minute. Let what you do and say speak for you. God bless the citizens of the city of Flint. They are most important. <laughs> that this council show compassion for folks who came. One of them the Taylors, his mama died, that was on Carpenter, and the other one was the 6722, who was the lady on Fleming, and then the one that Miss Galloway had a, way, a problem with was the pretty looking girl that I knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's my opinion, because she asked questions about who she was. Councilwoman Galloway. Yeah. Mr. President, I just want the record to show that I never did not support these two. My concern was that these two addresses were grouped in when Mr. Mays included two additional addresses that did not correlate with the right of first refusal. 
the two people that were before us on these properties, they actually had the right of first refusal. The addresses that Mr. Mays is speaking of, of the constituent that came, spoke before us and said she had a mortgage and Mr. Mays gave her the list and she identified two properties that she was interested in. And so Mr. Mays is consistently saying he doesn't like to vote on things together, and yet at times he wants to force us to. And so I do support these two. I was empathetic with the young man whose mother passed away. And so I'm not denying this. I said no to the additional addresses that Mr. Mays tried to take advantage of in that environment. So I just want the record to be clear that Councilwoman Galloway did support it, did not support the additional addresses that were added at that time. I want to say to Ms. Galloway, that's how you stay in hot water. You going to publicly say I'm trying to take advantage of folks? Let me tell you, Ms. Galloway, I wouldn't care if we kept 20 properties that was agreed upon. Every owner occupant got the right to first refusal. I don't care if Maurice called it to my attention. I don't care if R.L. Mitchell or you. Everybody got the same right of first refusal. So I don't appreciate you up here in your slick way trying to slander my name, talking about take advantage of this. No, everybody got the same right to first refusal if they own or occupy. So don't talk like that to me and don't say bad, wrong information. Everybody got the same right under the policy of first refusal if it's occupied or owned. You just don't understand it. You just didn't know that Iban and uh, what's their name, House of Esther, ain't the only occupant because you wasn't involved in it. You didn't get involved in it until the last two days, had voted against it all your life, and then threw me out of meeting and didn't have, is she talking, you want us to hear you? I want to say Because I didn't say a word. word when she was talking, dogging me, talking about he taking advantage. That's an attack. You don't know what the heck was going on because you didn't get involved in it for two days. The last two and threw me out. I worked on it for a year. I want to see you work on a project for a year and then I know more than you do and throw you out of me. Now don't be talking about me uh, taking advantage. That's negative. Use a doggone fool and I'm ready Council. to vote. You, don't, you ain't going to attack me without getting attacked back. Council. I'm taking advantage of Council. residents. Council. Council. That's a Council. foolish statement. It's illegal. It's a personal attack. It ain't factual. Yes. Councilwoman. Um, through you to the city attorney, it is my understanding that with the Open Meetings Act, if it's a recessed meeting, it does not need to be posted. Can you clarify? Point of order. What is being asked and discussed? She's asking the city attorney does a he recess. He didn't have the floor. She did a point of information. That's she out of order. My point of order, point of information is to the speaker. He was never the speaker. Councilman Mays, Councilman Mays, please let me facilitate okay. the meeting. Just okay, just let y'all do bruise different. No, let me facilitate okay. the meeting. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, go ahead, um, the rules apply City Clerk. Okay. Me, e even I? though it's a recess meeting, we still have to still still officially notify the public. Now, in that regard, this also, you have a special affairs meeting on Monday to take care of business that you were unable to take care of tonight. So in that regard, you know, of course that's post Point of order. Mm -hmm. I, yes. I, I cannot hear the clerk over my colleague. Councilwoman, please, please listen. I now, I, you know I what? Can't. Let me let me facilitate the meeting, please. Right. Okay, I can hear her. I, you can hear her. Madam Chair, I, can't hear her. I, Madam I cannot. Okay. I'll, I'll talk Mays. louder. You know what? Guys, listen. <laughs> it's 11 o'clock, okay? I'm not going to do this this week. It's 11 o'clock. Let's move this meeting forward. I'm trying to facilitate this meeting. I'm trying to be Kirk and Rhoda has joined the crowd. Madam Chair, I guess you'll adjourn this meeting this, for lack of a quorum this because meeting, Ms. Herkin wrote it. This meeting is adjourned for lack of a quorum. Um,
governmental operations adjourn, adjourned at 11, 10 p.m. And Black grants, I guess, won't happen for a lack of a quorum. With Mr. Guerra, I would have left no motion on the floor and will vote to withdraw it to talk back and forth with Kate Fields and them to the cows come home. That's what they did the other day. And the cows had came home, left, and then came home again. Point of order, Mr. Mays is not being germane. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be Jermaine, Tito, Michael, Jackie, or none of them. But I'm going to talk about this AECOM contract. Now, ain't that a cheap shot? Here, yeah, I'm talking about the contract, the time spent on it, and she talking about the Jackson 5. I am Jermaine then. I'm in the K field telling y'all what to do. You're going to end up in a world of trouble. I guarantee you, I'm going to guarantee you that. I'm going to guarantee you. Oh, we will bring this council special affairs meeting back to order. Remember, I'm going to end by saying this, then I'm going to say God bless you and God bless the citizens of Flint. When y'all go low, guess what I do? Get right with you. So y'all might well cut that strategy out. It ain't going to work with me. God bless you. God bless the citizens of the city of Flint. And I pray for me and my family. And I, when I ask for forgiveness, it's in my room. I got girlfriends I don't call. The administration better start ringing our phone. Because I ain't chasing damn man and ain't chasing too many women at age 60. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome.